Welcome back to Mooney Mayhem. I'm Osric Vox, and who tried to yada Eclipsa? One of the most recent episodes of Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Yada Yada Berries, was all about Star trying to find the cobra behind who planted Yada Yada Berries in Eclipsa's oatmeal, which would have turned her into stone. But by the episode's end, we don't find out the culprit. That monster's still out there, but not like those monster monsters. I mean, like that monster monster. Yeah, looks like we still have a mystery on our hands. But as I said in my breakdown for the episode, so check that out if you haven't. I believe we saw the culprit in the episode. This is not the first potentially short-lived mystery in Star vs. the Forces of Evil. After all, that one week between Total Eclipse of the Moon and the Butterfly Trap had us all wondering, well, who did erase Meteora from Uni's records? Only for the answer to be the Magical High Commission. But if you rewatch Total Eclipse of the Moon, you'll see that the Commission themselves made an appearance, although very briefly with no dialogue. However, that still goes to show that the series has had a habit of showing showing the masterminds behind a crime before. So why should this time be any different? And why would they leave it so open-ended? Is there someone out there actively trying to get rid of Eclipsa? Well, I mean, probably the general populace of Muni hates her, but I don't believe any of the humans or monsters we saw in this episode was behind trying to get rid of Eclipsa. No, 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 no. I think the person trying to turn Eclipsa into stone was Eclipsa herself. Plot twist. Now I know what you're thinking. All right, that's crazy. And it sounds like you're just trying to pay Eclipsa as the villain when she's supposed to be in this morally gray area. Area. And, well, I don't think Eclipsa is a villain at all, but I think her being behind the yada yada berries actually feeds in into that moral gray area. So first, let's look at all the evidence. Starting with Manfred. When he's first petrified into stone, everyone is shocked, including Eclipsa, giving us the idea that she was unaware of this entire situation. And I do believe Eclipsa's reaction here is genuine. However, do you guys notice that after this scene, Eclipsa is moderately calm, even by the episode's end? She never acts as if her life is in danger. She just shrugs it off. Yeah, people don't like me, but if someone got that dangerously close to an assassination attempt, you think that she would be kind of concerned, maybe of the security in the new mini castle, but no. Now she does say she can't let these assassination attempts rule her life, but I think there's a difference between letting it rule your life and being a bit more cautious. This doesn't make anything definite. I just find it questionable, even if you could argue, well, it's in Eclipse's character. But this takes us to our second piece of evidence and question. The location of the berries. The berries got all the way inside the monster temple, in Eclipse's own bowl. This would mean it was an inside job. Someone either on the castle staff, or who's frequently allowed in the castle, successfully infiltrated the kitchen and planted the berries in Eclipse's meal. Yet, when we look at everyone stars chained up, no one in the royal guard is in sight. I'm assuming Star and Marco imprisoned everyone who Sherry had a receipt on. So if it was someone in the royal guard, I think they would have been chained up as well. Yet, I don't believe there's a significant character on the inside capable of pulling off such a thing while having a good motive aside from Eclipsa. But that takes me to my third piece of evidence, the other three episode segments that aired alongside Yada Yada Berries. So Yada Yada Berries, Down by the River, The Pony Head Show, and Surviving the Spider Bites all had one thing in common. They're all exploring the consequences of Eclipsa being queen. The Pony Head Show and Surviving the Spider Bites especially, dealing with Star trying to fix Eclipse's image so she can be accepted by the kingdom. Things that Eclipse, for the most part, is proactive in. So, with all of that said, why do I think Eclipse was the one who tried to yada yada herself? Well, it was an attempt in something she still pulled off by the episode's end. Gain the trust of Muni. Look, we know Eclipse's golden rule. She does what she has to for herself. And something that would be very beneficial to herself would be getting the respect, admiration, and trust of her kingdom. I think Eclipsa intended to turn herself into stone, knowing that Star, Marco, and maybe Glosseric would all come through and undo the properties of the yada yada berries. And in the meantime, while she's petrified, there would definitely be suspects who would be taken in. But once Eclipsa was freed, she still would have given her speech and set them all free, still acknowledging that she needs to gain Muni's trust. And from her eyes, what better way to do that than to set herself up so she could come forward and say, look, I'm trying to change. I don't blame anyone for trying to do this to me. But all I'm asking is for you guys to work with me. I think that would have been the opposite of what everyone's expecting, thus helping Eclipsa get off the hook. Now, I don't believe this is evil per se, but it certainly is manipulative. If this turns out to be 
true, yes, Eclipsa would have good intentions, but she definitely went about it the wrong way. People being imprisoned as a result. Something I believe season 4 is trying to accomplish over season 3 is truly painting Eclipsa as this morally great character. And just because she's not a full-time supervillain doesn't mean that we can fully trust her. Now, maybe the culprit of who tried to yada yada Eclipsa will remain an open-ended question and will just be left to our imagination. Or, as more and more walls begin to crumble, this will be another revelation to push Star away. By the end of surviving the spider bites, Star already seemed to deter a little bit after learning that Globgor ate King Shastakan, lying to Eclipsa about the spellbook's remains. I'm very excited to see the rest of the season because I think Eclipsa's character is only going to get more and more interesting from here. But let me turn the question over to you guys. Who do you think tried to yada yada Eclipsa? Let us know in the comments below or tweet your thoughts to me at Box or at Vids. We're also on Instagram. You can help the Rontable grow by either becoming a member of the channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the Roundtable so you never miss any of our great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Fox out.